on these earlier cars, they didn't have retractable seat belts, and they didn't have what are called three-point, which means the shoulder harness. So it's much safer to have a shoulder harness, and what I do is I use a seat belt assembly from a 116 car that has the three point retractable belts. This particular one is from a 1978 300 SD. And then for the male, uh, the female part, I use one from a 115 bodied car which has this stiff cable for mounting the upper part I determine the height and start by drilling a small hole through this B pillar cover to locate where the hole will be in the B pillar. Now because this material is just thin steel, you cannot successfully tap a hole in it and have it hold during a severe collision. So what I do is take a sawzall and cut this piece loose, carefully in, use the end of the blade to cut this so we can open that area up. Then, from my stock of Mercedes-Benz parts, this is actually the captured nut for mounting the front suspension rubber mounts on a 107, 114, and 115 cars. I have to grind down the sides so that it will actually slip in there. Plus, it requires drilling the hole larger and tapping it out. Now, the fasteners that come with most seat belts are US thread. So the appropriate bolt, which is a shouldered bolt, this is US SAE thread, not metric. So I use a 7 16 20 tap to tap this out in order for the proper bolt to thread in. Now, since you run the risk of dropping this part down into the cavity, you want to cram a rag in here so that you can't lose it. Then, with this in place, I line it up with the bolt and drill another hole and countersink the, the hole so that a screw can be put in to hold this 
captured nut in place. So I have drilled a hole for the screw and you want to probably put this in the vise and run the screw in and so that you've got the threading started. I'm using a self-tapping screw so no need to use a tap on this hole. And you notice that I have ground this to be narrow in order to fit in this cavity. Then, this is the tricky part, you want to have a very tiny magnet in order to insert this. Now if you have a gas welder, you can simply weld on a little piece of welding rod a few inches long in order to place this and then break off the rod. I have a welder, but I'm showing how it can be done without. And you can see why it's very important to have a rag in there so that I don't lose it. It's a little tedious to do this, so have patience. There we go. Then we're ready for the screw to hold this in place. And then just before you get it tight, you want to put in the bolt so that your threads are lined up. There we go. And I tried to center that in the hole somewhat and tighten it up. Now we're ready to assemble. So simply mash that closed. and install your B-pillar cover. And then you want to figure out the orientation of your belt so that this goes against the rocker and this goes into your B pillar. And on these you want to, when you remove, if you remove these from a car, be sure and save these special little plastics, which actually go over the shoulder. There's one for one side and one for the other side. That makes it so that this will turn no matter how tight the bolt is. And there's also a spacer to space this out 
from the metal of the B pillar. There you go. And hopefully you were able to save the bolt head cover. Now, to mount this on the floor, because there's no threaded section in the rocker, it's going to require a mount to the floor that you bolt the reel, the retractor, to. Now on some cars, you can use a longer one. On this particular car, with the seat back, the reel has to be almost against the floor to miss the seat adjusting mechanism. So I've made a bracket, simply drilled two holes, and bolt it to the reel, and then drill a hole in the floor to bolt the reel to the floor. And then under the car, you want to use not just a washer, you want a big plate in order to take a severe force of a front end collision and keep this reel where it's supposed to be. helps to have a helper. If not a helper, you can always use a pair of vice grips. I can actually reach both. And now, we have a three-point seat belt. It retracts. And you can safely drive your car with much more safety in mind. If you have questions, please contact me. I'll be glad to answer all your questions. You may notice this car has headrests. I have installed 108 bodied seats in this car, the same mounting holes that accept the later headrests. So this car is a much safer car to drive now. By the way, I use in all my trouble lights these fluorescent lights 
two advantages. One, they never get hot. So you can lay them on a seat. You never have to worry about burning the upholstery. And another thing, with incandescent bulbs, if you look at the bulb, you're blinded for 10, 20, 30 seconds. Not the case with fluorescent bulbs. It may be necessary to put a little epoxy at the bottom of the glass where it mounts to the base in order to keep this from wobbling around.